Let's see all the breakfast and plus TV Africa uh, time for the press. We, as always, will take you through the pages of the dailies and have our guests join the conversation to analyze some of the headlines on the papers this morning. GD Johnson is on standby. It's good to have you join us. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning to you, Messi. Good morning to Kofi, I guess, and good morning to all of you as well. All right, GD, let's uh, take a look at the leadership newspaper this morning for Friday. Let's find out what's making the rounds. And uh, you have the CSO, that's the Civil Society Organization. Stakeholders set criteria for electing next president and uh, says candidate must be free of corruption. Health issues must have capacity to revitalize the economy and create jobs. Must keep World Bank IMF at arm's length. <laughs> Don't you find this very interesting? Uh, away from that, President Mohammed Buhari commissions Bill's 3 million metric tons cement plant in Sokoto, and APC has done more than the United States government in infrastructure. That's what uh, Fashola, former governor, is quoted to say. And you also have eliminate all bandits and terrorists. President orders the military. Uh, PSC rejects report on carry and six star probe. Uh, probe, I beg your pardon, talking about the Hoshpa P case and uh, the fact that the police uh, officer is identified with that. But the Police Service Commission has rejected the report of the panel investigating the alleged connection between the suspended head of the intelligence uh, response team, that's uh, DCP Abba Kiari, and uh, the suspected international fraud star talked about. Hosh Poppy, as it's popularly known. But that's it this morning on the Leadership Newspaper. Let's move straight to the Nation on Friday. We have uh, the leading headline on the Nation Newspaper, Buhari to Military. Don't spare bandits, terrorists. Don't spare bandits, terrorists. Um, with the following writers. Northwest security situation giving me sleepless nights and poor weather stops president's visit to Zamfara. At the top of the front page of the Nation newspaper, Fashola, we've achieved more than the United States in infrastructure. Don't abandon power shift to south, Ohaneze cautions. Dangote cement uh, mops up 35.1 billion Naira shares. And VAT controversy affected remittances, says FIRS. Still with the Nation newspaper, why manufacturers should not cut or should cut cement prices by uh, prices by a mefiele uh, with the rider president unveils bua's plant in sakoto adeye bamidele five others boycott akt apc primary five means man declared winner um, we'll look at that going on in the next uh, segment we have more stories at the bottom of the front page father gets life jail for impregnating daughter Really, really strange and sad. And uh, Chopper didn't crash. Of course, that's coming from the police um, there. Finally, ECOWAS leaders meet in Burkina Faso on Burkina Faso, Mali coups, and six Yahoo boys convicted. Those are the headlines on the front page of the Nation newspaper. Away from the Nation newspaper this morning, we have the Daily Independent. And uh, the banner caption says... I am overwhelmed by Northwest security situation. That's what the president is quoted to say. He says he has ordered the military not to spare bandits. Optimistic Nigeria will win battle over evil. And NNPC gets $5 billion from Afrimex Bank to drive investment in oil sector. You also have another caption saying FIRS exceeds 2021 revenue targets and generates 6.405 trillion naira. Uh, that's uh, quite impressive, a lot of people would say. Reduced prices of building materials, MFLE tells manufacturers. A helicopter did not crash in Baoji, and that's what the police is quoted to say. Will support investors adding value to local resources. Uh, federal government is also quoted in that. And federal government revokes marginal oil field of 33 firms. And just before we move away from the Daily Independent, Buni gets Buhari, APC governor's nod to preside over convention. 
APC Northwest legislatures and, and legislators, I beg your pardon, and thus bellow for president in 2023. And PDP accuses the federal government of hiding on the fuel subsidy to siphon 3 trillion naira. And that's, uh, these are the headlines on uh, the Daily Independent newspaper. And finally, with, we go over to the Punch News Report with these headlines. Uh, how Security Report forced Buhari to cancel planned subsidy removal. How Security Report forced Buhari to cancel planned subsidy removal. Uh, very interesting read. It will make details on page two of the Punch News Report. But it has the following writers. FG feared subsidy protests could be worse than end SARS. Source. Reps to summon major oil marketers, transporters, customs, others, and World Bank IMF may decline Nigeria's loan requests over fuel subsidy. At the top of the Punch newspaper front page, unused GSM lines hit 108 million in 2021, says NCC report. PSC workers embark on three-day strike over constables' recruitment. Supreme Court decides alleged 32.8 billion naira embezzlement by pension director April 22. 33 successful bidders lose FG's in marginal oil field awards. 33 successful bidders lose FG's marginal oil field awards. Uh, that will make some interesting read and there's one that should not be missed. LNPC to deduct 127 billion naira from FAC and plans 80 or plans five billion dollar Afrexim Bank loan. Uh, please def defer on AIB. Police defer. AIB begins probe of Bauchi police helicopter crash. That is the accident investigation bureau. Can't wait to see what comes out of that. Um, we have APC aspirants alleged fraud. Fiamese ex SSG wins Ekiti. Governorship primary. Court remands NURT leader Kunle Poli and others over Lagos mayhem. We've been talking about the Idumota uh, mayhem for some time now. Uh, Randy Mann, 37, bags life imprisonment for raping 13 year old girl sent on errands. Really sad. Uh, Kaduna reporter gets 1 million naira bail after 83 days in detention. That's two, 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 unfortunate. And finally, these uh, following stories at the bottom of the front page. Abdul Razak solicits assembly's nod to remove auditor alleges misconduct. Um, Ogun Pasta arrested for camping, feuding housewife, daughter's a husband alleges sex romp. Ooh, that's a, a hot story right there. And uh, finally, Tinubu, Nigeria's wisest choice for 2023 presidency, says Soolu. My word, interesting. All right. Well, let's have G.D. Johnson uh, share his thoughts on uh, some of the stories this morning. G.D. Johnson, it's good to have you join us. Good morning. Good morning, my son. Good morning. All right. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Let's start off with the leadership newspaper. Uh, civil society organizations and stakeholders in Nigeria have uh, come up with some criteria for selecting the president come 2023, and some of which they say the candidate must be free of corruption, health issues, and must have capacity to revitalize the economy and create jobs and must keep the IMF, that's the international financial institutions, very far. What are your thoughts? Well, 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 for me, what the civil society should do should come back, should come back on is just citizen education, it's just an, an educated citizen, citizen mobilization, and not um, on what they should do with respect to their civic responsibility. Beyond the rhetoric of telling average citizen don't vote for this, can't listen the criteria. They are not political parties, it is the political parties that will determine. Um, the selection process. There are no national assembly that will make laws as regards to the eligibility or non eligibility of candidates contesting for the election. Their responsibility should be to educate, to go on a massive public awareness campaign, a massive public education program, a massive public mobilization towards participation in the political process. And I think that should be the focus of, of um, civil society stakeholders and the rest of us that are involved with the media that are the fourth estate of the realm 
uh, that has a responsibility of maintaining order in the society. That's my take on this particular issue. We need to educate the citizenry that their life depends on what they do when they enter into the polling unit to cast their vote. It is beyond sentiment of ethnicity, religion, um, and other kind of identity divide that we have used to divide ourselves and beyond whatever anyone is going to give to them on the day of the election, probably in terms of food or in terms of monetary uh, reward as to incentivize them in casting their vote. That should be our focus, uh, not talking about the candidate. We cannot talk about the candidate. We should tell the people what should be the guiding principle when we want to vote for, 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 for candidates in the election. That's my take. That's my take on, on that. I think um, the, the, the civil society, they are putting the cat before the horse, rather than put the horse before the cat. So do you also think that this should also not be part of the sensitization message that should be put out for, uh, you know, out there to the electorates, the kind of candidates that should be looking well, out for? No, you have to be strategic in the kind of communication you are putting out. Uh, strategic in the kind of communication. If you empower the citizen with right education, and leave the selection of candidates to the party. Let the party pick whoever they want to pick. But you educate the people on how they should go about expressing their civic responsibility. I think that, that, um, that, that, that's better. It's an holistic rather than a, uh, it's an holistic approach rather than a selective or narrow, narrow approach to, to this particular issue. As far as I'm concerned, what we need is, is an education citizen participation. A lot of youth don't participate in the process. How do we mobilize them? We need to go to campuses across Nigeria. And I think that's the direction we should be looking at. Campuses across Nigeria, educating the citizen. I remember while we were in secondary school, how Chief Ganifa Emi, um, um, Fala Ano, and the rest of them, and the rest of all the members of the civil society, Nigerian Labour Congress, used to come to campuses to interface with student union you know, and with the body of the student student leadership with respect to participating in in, 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 in civic society. The, the, the active participation of the youths, of university students, of student in tertiary institute, even students in secondary school, the certain degree, was higher on that military regime than what we have in a democratic dispensation. Okay, thank you very much, uh, Ms. Jerry Johnson. Let, let's look at the, um, uh, the president's uh, uh, stance on security and his uh, measures to try and curb the uh, insecurity in different parts of the country. The uh, story on the front page of the Leadership Friday is that um, he's telling the military to eliminate all bandits and terrorists. Eliminate all bandits and terrorists. Um, what are your thoughts on this? This is uh, 2022, um, and he's, he's going next year, 2023. Okay, he went ahead. If you see the way um, the independent cast the headline, he said, I'm overwhelmed by not a security situation. But Ari, well, um, it's just like you in the studio telling us, the viewers, that you are overwhelmed by presenting this program this morning. What do you think they will do to you? Or what do you think you will do to me? From this end, if I tell you I'm overwhelmed by um, by security by by presenting this program, by joining you, presenting this program is 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 um, I don't know I don't know what to say. How many times the president has made this statement? He's the commander in chief of federal government. Yeah. This is core responsibility. Is that it's one and old to protect the lives and property and territorial integrity of men is, is an oath which is swore. And it does not need to direct or does not need to say it's overwhelmed about the security situation. And like you said, this 2022. The president became president in 2015. And 2022 to 2020, that's seven years ago. Huh? No, so so it's 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 a failure on the part of security. Security apparatus and the feeling on the part of himself as, as the head of the security uh, network that we have in Nigeria. If we still have the challenges which we have in this country with respect to banditry and kidnapping and terrorism, and I think that it took the government too long 
to categorize and label bandits as terrorists. And I think we treated it with idlos and people. When, 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 when elected officials begin to negotiate with non-state actors, when non-state actors become critical component of public governance, public policy formulation, and when they have opportunity of imposing their own views, their own policies on people by collecting taxes, by collecting levies, and by people negotiating with them to release to release them, to release their loved ones that have been kidnapped. And you have this type of gory situation. For me, as far as I'm concerned, at the end of his tenure, we'll see how we score Buhari when it comes to security, security issues. Because all, that's one of the fundamental factors that helped him being elected in 2015. And now, if you look at the security situation of Nigeria in 2022 and compare it to the last years of Jonathan in administration, you agree with me that the security situation of Nigeria under Jonathan, who happens not to be a former a military head of state and a former military person, is far better, except you want to pay to the gallery because it's there. Is there all we just need to do is to do a content analysis of all the front pages of newspaper in the last seven years and we look at which issue is the dominant issue that were reported by the media and then we see we that it's security issue that we keep reporting every day, every day, every day, every day. So it's an indication of what happens in society. So let the president be living under the illusion that he is overwhelmed by the security challenges because it sits too much in an asshole rock, does not transverse the length and breadth of Nigeria to know what is really going on in Nigeria. And the brief that the security agents are given to him and people that are in charge of it is not a proper brief. All right, Gide Johnson, let's also still look at the leadership newspaper where uh, you have the APC has done more than the United States government in infrastructure. And that's uh, according to Fashola. That has gotten a lot of reactions, uh, you know, in the couple of hours. They were let Fashola be living on that. I don't know where someone, you write an exam for yourself, you mark the exam, you score yourself, and you declare the result. There's a minister of works. You know, he's coming to give an account of being the minister of works for seven years. So he's trying to justify. I'll just give Fashola a clue. And uh, there are two, there are, there are, there are two major routes that I'll talk about. A1 in Nigeria, as far as Nigeria is concerned, A1 is the gossip part of expressway. It's the gateway to Nigeria um, from other parts, from other parts of the country to, 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 to Lagos. Now, what has happened to Lagos part of expressway? How many years have they been doing it? God will help them in Jesus' name. And let's look at Lagos part of expressway. When Fashola was governor of Lagos State, uh, he made all kinds of promises concerning that corridor. Lagos Padagri uh, Expressway is a corridor from Nigeria to other parts of West African countries. It's what I call the Equus Corridor. What have they done concerning, concerning, concerning that route? So he's just fooling himself. He's engaging in, 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 self, in self deception. He's playing the ostrich, burying his head in the sand and the whole of his body is out. And in what way has Nigeria done more than America in terms of infrastructure? I don't know what he's saying. Okay, Mr. Johnson. Uh, Mr. Johnson, I'm, I'm, I'm looking at the record of the Buhari administration as far as infrastructure uh, uh, investment is concerned. He also made a statement. He said um, that this, this, the Buhari administration has spent more than any other administration um, has spent, especially the previous administration um, that was in power for uh, the previous party. Spending, you know, spend, sixteen years. Spending money, Kofi. Spending money is one thing. Getting result is another. The fact that you have budgeted money and you have allocated money and then you have disbursed the funds for this project does not mean that uh, you have done the right thing. So spending money, you can spend more. They, they, they've completed, he, he, said, he said they have completed 971 kilometers of roads and that um, he wants Nigerians to show him which administration or which government in the past few years, especially from the PDP, 16 years in power, completed at least 50 kilometers of road, federal government. Um, he says it's not happened. And they have done 971 I kilometers. Know quite right, but I know quite right that when he was governor, he had issues with government, with Jonathan later reimbursed, with, with most state governors. Collecting money back from 
from federal government with, with respect to projects they've done on behalf of the federal government and then with them reimbursing. It was under him that that becomes a, a, major, a major problem in reimbursing state government with back with the funds they, they expended on, on, on construction of roads. Look, Fashala is fooling himself. He's just fooling himself. I'm sorry. He's, he's, he's fooling himself. He's thinking he's self, self division. We are, we are the roads now. Tell me. We are the roads. Tell me, let me tell you about, uh, let me tell you about Lagos. Let me talk about Southwest. I've had this, I don't go to any part of Nigeria, but I'm sure I've been to Bauchi. I've been to Gombe. In the last, in the last six, in the last six months, I've been to Bauchi, I've been to Gombe. And I traveled by road from Bauchi to Gombe and Gombe back to Bauchi so and by here to, to this business. But I've transversed the length and breadth of Southwest. I want to ask Mr. Fashala, What's the state of road between uh, Shagam to Ore? That's in the southwest, I'm asking him. That's the corridor. If you want to get out of Lagos, uh, out of southwest, to go to any part of the country, you see that you go through um, um, Shagam Ore, or you go through uh, Ibadan, if uh, axis, and depending on wherever you are going to and the of those roads. Or you tell me about uh, Ibadan, Ibadan and Lorry. What's, what's, what's he saying? Is he eye on something? Okay, uh, uh, thank you, Mr. I, 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 don't, I don't understand where, yeah, where, these yeah. people, where these people, where these people, where these people get their country to insult the sensitivity of Nigerians. Has he ever traveled from Abuja to Lagos by a road? Ask him. Many times journalists are, are, are interviewing the minister. Let them ask him, when was the last time he traveled from Abuja? To Lagos by road. He's from Lagos. He's the governor of Lagos. He was the governor of Lagos. He's the minister of works and transport. He shouldn't be taking, he shouldn't be flying by here to Lagos. He should travel by the roads that he has constructed. They should ask him those tough questions and not allow him to resolve the sensitivity of Nigeria. When did he travel from Abuja to Lagos by road? Mr. Johnson, we, we, we have to move on. Uh, I wish you had more time on this particular issue, but um, it's still on the front page of the Leadership Friday. Um, uh, the, the investigation by the panel set up uh, by the Police Service Commission into uh, Abakari, DCP Abakari, and his relationship with Hush Poppy. The re report has been presented by the panel, but the Police Service Commission, through its uh, Department of Police Discipline, after studying that report, said it's not thorough enough, and um, they're recommending that um, another investigation be conducted into this same matter before taking a decision. W what's your take on this? Yeah, it's clear that um, from the way and how quickly the police panel came up with their result was very, very indicative of the fact that uh, there was not a thorough job was not done. A thorough job was not done. So it's not it's not surprised that the police service commission rejected that particular report and calls for 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 a, for a review. And we wait for the we, we wait for the review because the facts are there in the public domain. Uh, it's just that we don't have the entire. Uh, facts, but some of the loose facts are there in the public domain, and you piece them together. Where a police officer uh, turned himself to a tailor and um, providing tailoring services to, to to the people that are engaging in, in that allegedly engaging fraud, it's cause for concern. So, is an issue still under investigation so that we don't um, abuse or corrupt the process or prejudice? What is being investigated, but the, the, I commend the Police Service Commissioner for saying that you know what you need to look at this particular report because the credibility of Nigerian police is at stake, the credibility of Nigeria is at stake, our integrity as a nation is also at stake. So I support what the Police Service Commissioner has done. Okay, and quickly as we close this uh, segment down now, let's look at the, the accusation, the opposition party, that's uh, the PDP accusing the federal government of hiding on the fuel subsidy to siphon three trillion naira. I mean, just yesterday, we also had the reports, you know, from the Minister of Finance saying three trillion naira is what has been budgeted for for fuel subsidy for 2022. Well, it's okay. I don't know what to say. Daily Independent newspaper. Now, I don't know what to say for that, except that uh, whether it's subsidy or not, we don't even know what is happening. They've taken us for granted and for a right for too long. And we subsidizing. When the president was in opposition, he said, if anybody is talking about subsidy, that person is in Nigeria. And how do we come about subsidy 
y otro a Pimos, Petrillon, Toulon. That we have ever paid the history of this nation. That's the question we need to, 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 to ask uh, ourselves. What they told us, if you go back, I keep telling, is the best way you make sense of reality, observe realities. You do a content analysis of what the newspaper have reported over time. If you do a content analysis of stories in the last 23 years of democratic governance, and your focus, which will be a longitudinal study, your focus will be on petroleum subsidy. You will be shocked at how we have taken the lies and the deceptions of government, not this government alone, but successive governments in Nigeria under this present democratic situation, taking us for a ride when it comes to subsidy payment and non-subsidy, non-subsidy, non-subsidy payment. Who are they subsidizing? And what are they subsidizing? That's the question. And it's as a result of people making money, fleecing this country. That's why they have not put in place the critical infrastructure that is required to ensure that we not only extract our oil, we process our crude oil into various petrochemical products and petroleum products that we can use in this country for local consumption and export to foreign countries rather than be importing these products that God has naturally endowed us with. It's like someone that lives, that knows the season. He lives in the attic and then he has the material to make wood to protect himself from, from the biting cold of living in the attic. Then he will now export the wool and then he will now in, he, he will import the, the cold for his citizen to protect himself from, 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 from the biting cold of the attic. He, he shows the level of our intelligence and the level of our thinking and it's, it's rather, rather, rather unfortunate. There is a political dimension to this subsidy remover or non-subsidy remover. Thank you very much, Jiri Johnson. Quite interesting analysis. I wish you had more time, but we have to go. Jiri Johnson is the chief uh, lecturer at the Nigerian Institute of uh, uh, Journalism, and he's been a guest on Off the Press right here on The Breakfast. Mr. Johnson, thank you for your time. It's a pleasure to be with you. Thank you. A wonderful day. All right. Um, up next, let's take a look at what happened today in history, of course. Um, we'll be back after that with a first major discussion. The APC primary elections have held in Ikiti State and the winner has emerged. Stay with us. We'll be right back.